Cool, let me just check here. Okay, good. Just making sure that, no, this thing's not on here. Can't seem to get this thing working. Okay, it's not a big deal. I'll just have to use a mouse like the old school style. Um, yeah, so maybe that was really awesome from Annika closing the loop, uh, but maybe something slightly different. Um, I kind of created this a little bit ago, and it's basically how I used AWS and stuff like that in maybe an innovative way. You know, like we hear a lot about cool tech and stuff like that, and sometimes I just get these random ideas that pop up in my head, and I think maybe I want to try something a little bit weird. So basically what happened is the story is that you, David Vanner, as in Vanner Vogel, someone I greatly admire. Um, so yeah, how the story goes, uh, I wanted to put myself into like Netflix or something like that, kind of like badly. I was like, well, it would be cool if I watched the movie and I could upload a video of myself and it would just be me in the Netflix Lord of the Rings movie or Man vs. the Wild or whatever it was. So I thought, okay, I want to I see how this kind of goes. So I took Sean Bean and I kind of put myself on his face so that's a big why well, the thanks is there. And, you know, he's that Game of Thrones actor or uh, Lord of the Rings uh, Boromir. And I wanted to see how I could uh, get myself uh, to be deep faked into these videos and stuff like that. So um, a little bit about this, how traditional deep faking goes. I'm going to probably bore you with a little bit of AR right now, but I think it's kind of cool. So it's normally just these four steps, extract, sort, train, and convert. Pretty simple. Um, and then when you want to like look into it a little bit more, there's like two main things you'll use a lot. You'll use these things called autoencoders, which basically you can imagine it as like almost compressing images, making them more fuzzy, and then like decompressing those images and making the resolution good again. They call this like a dimensionality reduction. It's like some big term crazy word, but Google's actually using this right now to as a kind of compression. So it's pretty cool. And you'll probably see a lot more of it in the future and stuff. Like every phone will just have a decoder that decodes this compressed image that's been done by some neural network out there that these super smart guys have thought of. But um, then you get another thing called GANs, and that's like your generative adversarial networks. And basically they, um, they, they actually create images, right? So if you've ever seen some of those pictures on like NVIDIA, where it's just like a human face that doesn't exist. They're using a GAN to generate those images. Most GANs consist of like two networks. I promise you this is the most boring technical bit, but most of the GANs, uh, they have these two networks. One generates the images, and another one is like your discriminator. And these two keep testing to see if the images are like the ones that are stored in your data set if, if it can't discern any more the difference between the fake images that are being generated and the ones that are in your data set, well, then you've already got these amazing pictures and that's kind of how these two neural networks adversarially work against each other to create the big best best pictures. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a massive mouthful and that's like the two pieces of main neural net technology you would use. But I promise you, it's not only about that kind of stuff. Um, then basically in this extract phase, what happens is you use like another neural network, right? It's just tons of tons of neural net magic. Uh, S3FD, which is like a facial detector to detect faces. Then you use FAN to basically figure out the alignments of those faces. And then you use VGG to like kind of do a mask segmentation of those faces. So um, again, this is traditional and it's not all about that. Then uh, what you want to do is you kind of you want to like create an alignments file, which is all of those um, alignments of the people's faces and stuff that we saw earlier. And you also want to do the hard data science of like sorting the pictures and getting them all in a nice neat row and deleting any uh, unnecessary pictures and stuff like that that you wouldn't want. Um, the reason you kind of like then get into the train bit, which is I'm, I'm moving here so that I can show you the really cool thing. And if you look here, you can see it's got this encoder, decoder part, you know, like autoencoders. And then you can see it's got input faces coming in there and it's like comparing like loss over there and stuff like that. And this is basically how your traditional face swap would work. Um, when it comes to your actual, uh, when it comes to like why we like ran, why I ran this, it was you can see like one model, it takes about 24 hours 
to train it, and that would be like to swap my my face onto like Sean Bean's face or something like that. And it cost like 0.526. That's the price of a, a one hour with a G4 DN extra, extra large. Um, and then for 24 hours, so it cost me $13 a day. Um, and that was just interesting to even see that like how much, and, and I mean, I'm going over like 100,000 iterations, um, millions of pictures. And it was just interesting to see how I could do that churn over a day and have it cost me $13 because I was originally like, maybe I should buy a computer, you know, like with a graphics card and something like that. And I looked and it was about a thousand dollars, a thousand euros to 2000 euros for something that was super decent. So I thought, okay, well, let me just do it remotely in the cloud. And that's kind of where all of this started from. Um, then you kind of get like to the fun bit, you know, you've built your model, which is this <laughs> left thing over here. And then you kind of add a video to it and something like that. And then you kind of create, you know, some face swapped uh, kind of deep fake, you know. And this, again, like I say, is the traditional way of doing it. So what I took here was uh, Deadpool from the new Free Guy movie. And I tried to put Mark Rudder on his face because I just thought that would really be a super cool prime minister. I hope he doesn't see this and hate me or something. But um, that was the general idea, and it was actually pretty easy. Model done, add video, and boom, you can kind of like start deep faking stuff now. So it's it wasn't really that uh, wasn't that tricky, should I say? Um, but then also there's a step five, which people don't actually talk much about, but I just included quickly, and that is that um, your videos are basically everything is either photoshopped or you use like a program like Resolve, DaVinci Resolve, which basically lets you do after effects and stuff. All of the deep fakes, the great stuff, you see it, they've actually added a little bit here and there. And I just wanted to include that for, for a reason that I'll speak about later with Resolvify and how we use it with AWS. So simply the architecture, here it is again, the architecture is quite easy. Uh, we just use like SSM. Uh, into an EC2 instance, get temporary credentials for that user so you can create the WebSocket connection. It uses that AWS magic, so it lets you get into a, a SSM into an EC2 instance that's in a private subnet. Um, and we just use the deep learning AMR from AWS. Um, yeah, and that, again, like you can see from the price, $13, an, uh, $13 a day, basically. So it was pretty cheap and secure to use, you know. It's temporary credentials in a private subnet, nothing to worry about. Um, so the challenge came along. Uh, Ilya is our CIO over here. And he um, he said to me, hey, you know, like I do this, I've been playing with this deep faking and I've been putting these pictures of and videos of Mark Rudder around. Can I do anything else cool? So he sent me this link of this uh, Martin Harbeck, who was doing some uh, cool stuff, and it was basically people were doing these, sending these videos in, and it would make their like old appearance picture, right, like of their family or something like that, and animate your family photos. And this was actually from MyHeritage.nl, and you can see 91 million animations and stuff like that. But he asked me if I could do it, and it got me wondering, like, how do they do that? Because I trained this whole big model and that took me like a whole day minimum to kind of train and that only works with two people. So this is really the cool bit of machine learning that I think like we're really stepping into now. And it's this thing called uh, this first order motion model. So uh, it looks crazy. I added a whole bunch of like uh, of the scary maths in here, which doesn't really make that much sense to me. So that's probably a good thing. But basically it consists of a video and a picture. And that gets put into this big motion extractor piece that extracts like the different key points from the pictures and the videos and some affine transformations, which are like matrices, which are leaning or something like that. And then it puts it all into this dense motion, uses the initial source into this generator and then creates an output. And from the top of it, it looks like pretty similar to what we were doing in the with the traditional deep faking, but it has some serious advantages and like specifically to real world stuff. So um, I wanted to show now like what I mean is basically if you have a driving video and any image, you can apply that image motion to those uh, that video's motion to those images. So 
and, and for free. You don't have to train seven different models or eight different models. So you don't have to spend those eight different days. And this effect can also be applied to other stuff too. So you could like use it for fashion or cartoons and things like that. So what I'm really trying to say and what I'm realizing from all of this stuff was, you know, the movie industry was where I was targeting first, you know, or Netflix or something like that to like put myself in this movie. But it really actually has so much more, so, it's so much broader than that, right? It's like fashion, yes, it's like, it's like these cartoons. And maybe even when you're seeing a car driving in one of these commercials, it's not really a car. Um, so this, this then I was like, okay, now I'm interested. Now I want to figure this, uh, this thing out. So to build it, it's actually pretty simple. It was n nothing really that complicated. There's like some great models and some Google Colab stuff, you know, that already exists and all of that cool stuff. And you can like just apply it with these two simple commands. But, but who's interested in that? You know, I, I want to do this stuff on AWS. But what I realized first was, um, you know, obviously... Again, the problem was I don't have a laptop with compute. So I was like, oh, I mean, with GPU compute. And I was like, oh, that, that really sucks. So I found that there's this really cool, um, this graph of like all of the different AWS instances, the P instances, the G instances. Specifically, what's useful is how much memory, the GPU memory they have. Because if you go to the AWS docs, it doesn't tell you. But so it was like, okay, cool. Now I'm using this G4DN. It's got 16 gigs of GPU as opposed to like a P4, which has 40 gigs. I never realized that. But anyway, um, and then I kind of, I was like, okay, I spec'd out the instance I needed. And then I was like, okay, well, there's these cool G480s. If you don't know about this, it's AMD's version of this G4DN. So it's like the Radeon instead of like an NVIDIA graphics card. But it uses less RAM. And so, to be honest, the libraries were a lot harder to use than CUDA. Like, it uses OpenCL and stuff. So I was like, ah, running away in fear and stuff like that. Um, so I just stuck with the G4DNs, yeah. So what happened was, um, what I wanted to do was I wanted to wrap that code in um, that, I wanted to wrap that code that takes the, the video and the picture, and I wanted to, like, put it together so that I could stream it through an AWS remote GPU instance and then join Teams or Zoom or WhatsApp, which I actually did with my wife, and then pretend to be someone else. And what I basically did was I, I found this other really cool tool, and it's an unsung hero of AWS. It's this nice DCV. And I'll put it over here too. It's, um, it's an agent you can install, and basically it lets you have like almost single digit latency, millisecond latency to these EC2s. It's way quicker than workspaces or like, and feels quicker than AppStream personally, but it was really, really quick. And I even tested it out. You could, you could put stuff like a game. You could install a game on this, this EC2 and actually play with it and stuff like that. And I worked it out. It's about $1,500 uh, per year um, if you're playing 24 hours a day. So I was like, well, maybe gaming is even a bit of an interesting situation here. But but anyway, so back to the story. Nice DCV, really amazing tool. Check it out. Um, and, and basically, it's very similar, right? So it's just about streaming, taking the source video, which is actually a picture of me or video of me from the webcam, and then a picture of uh, Vanna Vogels, my hero, and, um, and kind of putting those two together. So basically, what I ended up with was something like this. I just uh, put it here for a demo so you can kind of see how it works. There's a little bit of a... <laughs> I actually joined a few meetings live, like with our teams and stuff like that, and I just sit in it, and I just kind of move just a little bit. But every single time there was someone who was amazing talking about AWS, you know, they'd suddenly get a little bit more quieter, like kind of going like, who's this? Why is Vanna Vogels in this chat? You know, so... um. I thought it worked. That was my touring test. And uh, that's how I felt uh, I proved the success of it. So basically, I feel the takeaways, though, are there's actually so much we can do with these technologies. And being innovative, you know, sometimes it just starts with some little crazy idea. But you can actually probably get it built really quickly on AWS and then turn it all off and have it cost you like $20 later and then you're done. 
Um, but th that to me was the great way to get it to work and things like that. And yeah, if you'd like to see a live demo or anything like that, you can join me at labs. I created a little uh, space to actually test it so you can see yourself as, I don't know, Cristiano Ronaldo or anyone you want to be. Personally, I actually called my wife as her sister to fake her out. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the chat. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to give me a shot. <laughs> Woo!